Hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm sharing my weight loss journey so far and how I lost roughly 20 pounds in about four months, which can be difficult to do if you're like me and in your 40s and your metabolism isn't what it used to be. I'll share what finally worked for me, what clicked after trying and failing with many other things over the course of four to five years and getting to a point where I thought it might be impossible to get that weight off. I'll also share what I think I did wrong in the beginning and corrected. I'm not a dietitian or a weight loss expert. This is just my experience. This may not work for you, but I feel like this can be helpful for those of you who are struggling the way I was. I was really hesitant to do this video. It's one I've been promising to share with you because you guys have noticed the difference, but it's a vulnerable video to put out there. I'll be showing before and after pictures and just some things with you that I haven't shared before. I also didn't want it to be perceived that this was only about weight and what we look like because we have enough of that going on with social media and everything else. This is about how you feel about yourself. If you're comfortable in your own skin, it's more about mindset. No matter what size you are, what age you are, what number is on the scale, if you're a size two, if you're a size 22, if you're not feeling good about yourself, if you're not confident and comfortable in your own skin, it's a tough place to be. So while this is a weight loss video, there's more to it than that. It has to do with mindset and also feeling good on the inside and taking care of our bodies, which is something I hadn't been doing for like four or five years. I didn't feel like myself. I didn't feel confident. I wasn't fitting in about 75% of the clothes in my closet. And that is just not fun, no matter what size you are. I didn't even want to go run errands because I just didn't enjoy getting dressed and having to find things to wear. It was a struggle. Another reason I was hesitant to do this video is because I don't feel like I'm finished with my journey. I guess it's a form of imposter syndrome or something. I'll get more into the why of that as I go through the video, but I kept thinking if I'm not fully finished, is putting out a video going to even be worth it? But I had so many of you asking me for this video. I started thinking you know, losing any amount of weight, especially over 40, regaining confidence I didn't have for so many years, and just getting my body back into a healthier place on the inside is something that should be shared. And sharing how I went about doing that would be so helpful for those of you who are struggling like I was, regardless of where I feel I am in my journey. So I just have a lot of conflicting feelings right now. I'm going to be kind of scattered throughout this entire video, I think. Every one of us is at different points in our life journey. Our ages are different. Our bodies are different. Our metabolisms are different. What works for me may not work for you, but you may be able to take some nuggets here and there from this video. I just know that what worked for me when I was younger just doesn't work anymore. My my metabolism is slower at 46 than it was at 26 and 36, and it will continue on that path the older I get. And of course, we have hormones and a perimenopause and menopause that goes along with this the older we get that makes it even harder. It's not as simple as eat less, move more like it used to be when I was younger. A lot more goes into it. Now, if you're over 40 like I am and you're wanting to lose weight or change something, I think it's important that you check with your doctor because a lot more could be at play with gradual gradual weight gain with hormones and menopause and things like that. I just wanted to give that disclaimer. I think that's important, especially in our age bracket. Just to share a little bit about how I started to notice the weight gain, what it did to my body, and a little bit about my background. Aside from gaining my freshman 15 when I went to college and having my two children, I was pretty consistent with my size and my weight my entire life. I hovered within the same five pound range. I would say I've never been a big scale person person. For me, it was more about how I was fitting in my clothes and just how I felt about my body overall. I would do a temperature check every now and then on the scale, but that just wasn't something that was at the forefront of my mind. Because of leaning out through weights and cardio, I just never really paid attention to the number on the scale because I knew that I could be heavier and it wouldn't really matter as long as I was feeling good about myself and my clothes were fitting. I was also a pretty healthy eater. I mean, aside from college, I mean, we all go through periods where you eat a lot of junk, but I was always mindful with what I was eating. So even after I had kids, I was able to regain muscle definition. My stomach was never a problem for me. That's just not my body type. My body type is one where I put on weight easily in my butt and thigh area. Normally that changed after 40. So right around the time I was 40, we had a traumatic life event happen in our family, which derailed me from my regular workouts. That was the first thing that changed. And I've never really got back to being completely regular with those workouts. I'll address 
address that here in a minute, but I also stopped eating as mindfully. It was more about convenience and what was there. I'm actually kind of surprised I only gained 20 pounds because I just was not taking care of my body. So this weight gain was gradual over a period of a few years. I would notice something didn't fit. I would put on something else that fit. Later on, that wouldn't fit. Then I would have to go to something else. And you know, before I knew it, here we are several years later and almost my entire closet is too small except for my bigger clothes. And as I said earlier, it doesn't matter what size you are. If you're not feeling like yourself, if your confidence is not there, it just puts you in a really bad place. I didn't want to do anything where I had to think about what to wear. I just didn't feel good about the way I looked. There are very very few full body pictures of me from during this time because I just was not comfortable in my own skin at all. So I would try things here and there and they wouldn't work and I would just go back to the same way I was eating before until I felt like I wanted to try something else and I just went through cycles of that over the past few years and nothing was really working at all. I tried Weight Watchers and Noom, both of which are great programs. They work for a lot of people. They may work for you, but for some reason they just didn't do the trick for me. I felt like I was always tied to my phone, having to enter foods, and it just kept my mind on food more. I also knew I couldn't do something like keto, which would be too restrictive for where I live. I live in New Orleans. We have way too much good food here, but I also wanted something that I could easily transition back into if I strayed for a meal or a day or a vacation, and it wouldn't throw my body off kilter. I needed something that would be sustainable as a lifestyle choice so that if I did want to eat other things and not be perfectly healthy all the time, I could do that. But part of that for me, and I know a lot of you are like this, is getting rid of that sweet tooth in the late afternoons and evenings. That's something that I have a real problem with. I can't seem to control what I put in my mouth during those periods of time. I can practice portion control and eating healthy at other times of the day, but I would completely counteract that by eating completely unhealthy sugary things at night that would in turn just make me feel bad. I've tried moderation before. And until I do one other thing, moderation just does not work for me because I have a massive sweet tooth. So I have to get rid of those sugar cravings and there are sweets in this house. So it's not as simple as just saying, okay, get rid of all the trigger foods in your home. There's people that live in this house with me that have foods they like, and I'm not going to make them get rid of them just for me. I need to figure out what works for me. And one day I was in my closet and I was trying to get dressed for something and I could not find anything to wear that fit. Everything either looked bad or I couldn't even squeeze into it anymore. I don't know what it was about this particular day, but I just got so tired of this endless cycle of me struggling to get dressed every day and figure out what I was going to wear and looking in the mirror and not feeling like myself that I knew this was it. This is the time where I am going to get my body back the way it needs to be. Now for so many people, and especially those of us who are over 40, who are already having some problems getting weight off or feeling better or more energetic, a lot of it has to do with the types of foods we're eating. Starchy carbs, refined sugars, inflammatory foods, because they keep our bodies in a constant state of inflammation. They spike insulin and make it harder to lose weight, yes, but they also can make you feel so much more lethargic than you should and cause brain fog. And that is a huge, huge thing among me and my friends that are of this age and in their 50s, it's just the not feeling good overall. And that's why I'm saying moderation doesn't work. To completely just get rid of the sugar cravings, get rid of the brain fog, get rid of the lethargy. And this is all going back to the health and feeling good. This has nothing to do with weight. I knew from doing this in the past, I just needed to get all of that out of my body. So I completely for two weeks, and that's such a blip in time, if you think about it, cut all starchy carbs. That means bread and pasta and and cereal and crackers and cookies and all of those things, refined sugars and inflammatory type foods, foods that included gluten. And I find that I can eat in moderation after I have that two week temporary strict period because my body is just in this normalized state. I've done this a couple of times in my life just specifically to cut sugar cravings. And I'm always amazed afterwards at how 
how much more clearly I'm able to think how much more energetic I am and how I'm not tempted by the pantry anymore. So for the first two weeks, I cut all starchy, refined carbs and gluten, which basically includes anything that has wheat or white flour in it, like cookies, bread, pasta, cereal, and refined sugars, which is where all of the sweet cookies and brownies and things like that come in. But there's refined sugars in a lot of things. You basically want to eat as natural as possible, but you also want to eat a good ratio of protein, carbs, and fat fat at each meal and snack because that's going to keep your blood sugar regulated and it'll also keep you feeling satiated and full. A lot of people go too low when they're adding in that good fat thinking it's going to do something bad but it actually doesn't. I don't count calories or anything during this two week period. So during this phase I would drink my coffee black with a little scoop of collagen powder. I still do that. If I did eat breakfast I would eat one of my daily harvest bowls. This isn't sponsored by daily harvest or anything. I just have relied on their variety of natural fresh foods to keep me from eating the same thing over and over. For lunch, I would have a daily harvest bowl or a flatbread or a salad, or I would have a similar lunch to dinner, which is just some kind of a lean protein, whatever protein source you personally enjoy. And I would load up on non-starchy vegetables, complex carbs, and I would always include a good fat. Snacks would be jerky, a boiled egg, string cheese, nuts. I would have an occasional protein bar or protein shake for convenience. And that is something that I did wrong in the very beginning. I used a lot of those as meal substitutes, breakfast and lunch and snacks. I realized that while they may give me some kind of a result, I could get the same kind of result by eating better. But I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm human. I will have some foods like that in my life. It's just convenient. This is all about being realistic for how you live, how you eat. But during this first two week period, the main thing to focus on is no refined sugars, no starchy carbs or gluten. Increased water intake is huge. It's going to keep you hydrated and help you feel better. Getting consistently good sleep, I would say six to nine hours if you can. I mean, six is probably too low, but I'm trying to keep all of this very realistic, being real with you for, you know, what I get sometimes, but keeping a consistent sleep schedule is going to help decrease hunger and stress hormones so that you'll be more successful. As for supplements, that's going to be different for everyone. And as I stated before, you should check with your doctor, but I make sure that I take collagen, magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin C, a supplement called DIM that helps with hormones. And I have some others mixed in there too that I'm not thinking of, but those are kind of the main ones that I take on a regular basis that also help us feel better and help with energy. There's nothing gimmicky about this two week period of getting all of this junk out of your body and eating super healthy because sugar is an addictive substance. And even if you don't eat really sugary foods, it's still hidden in a lot of things. Most people do start to feel bad after a few days, kind of hungover, a little headachey, moody. It's temporary. It will go away. If you can just get through the two week period, you're golden. I am always blown away by how good I feel after. I do drop a little weight right off the bat. I have more energy. My brain fog is gone. I can think more clearly. So after the two-week period is over, you can add in more things. And that's what I did. I don't eat perfectly by any means, but I know now that I can go past the pantry. I don't have these huge cravings. I can have a cookie or a piece of cake, and I don't want more and more and more the way I did. I've never been one to say eliminate fruit completely, but I don't eat it during those first two weeks because I feel like for me, as someone who's trying to cut my sugar cravings, I feel like that's going to make that process take longer. So I add them back in after the two week period. But during this time, while I was actively trying to lose weight, I stayed completely away from refined carbs, wheat products, the pizza, pasta, bread, cookies, that kind of thing, refined sugars. I added back in oats, grains, quinoa, but I kept rice to a minimum. I also stayed away from from more starchy vegetables that spike blood sugar like potatoes and corn. I stayed away from soy, sugar, sweets. I did eat some dark chocolate and some of Daily Harvest little sweet treats that they have. Now I still ate a lean protein, complex carbon, good fat at every meal and snack. Snacks were of course smaller than meals. So here are some options for some proteins you might want to consider. All of this is going to come down to personal preference. And there are so many options for low starch vegetables, complex carbs, as well as good fats. I think a lot of people tend to go pretty minimal with the good fats. And I 
don't. I never did. I did also swap out regular milk for almond milk, also a personal thing that I chose to do. Some people don't like to eat red meat. I am fine with it. I also include butter and cheese. Some people, you know, dairy is a big thing or a hindrance. I don't have that issue, so I do eat some cheese. So sticking with red wine over white and clear liquors versus dark liquors and staying away from beer. It almost seems too simple to me to just sit here and tell you to eliminate things for a couple of weeks and then add some things back in and eat that way. And it's sustainable. But there's also a reason why everybody doesn't do it because it does take a little bit of discipline, figuring things out, doing a little research, figuring out low glycemic vegetables to eat. As we get older, it takes more than just eating less and moving more. It's more about what we put in our bodies, the quality of the foods we eat, so much more than calories in, calories out. I didn't really count calories the way most people do, and I'm not even talking about that in this video because that's a very, very personal thing. I just listened to my body and I put the best foods in it that I possibly could. And because I had had that two week period, I just found that I didn't overeat. I didn't have cravings I had before. I was able to be more mindful about what I was eating and really listen to my body. Whereas before I just couldn't do that. So that's why I feel very strongly about the two week period. Now, do I ever eat poorly? Yes, I do. And I feel like I can do that now and I can just slide right back into eating healthy and I'm not triggered into having cravings like I did before. I have periods where I'll go on vacation or I'll have meals and I'll eat starchy carbs, but I never have a problem going right back with eating the way I'm supposed to. Now, if I do have a prolonged period of time, if we're gone for four or five, six days and I'm eating abnormally unhealthy, drinking more, I feel it and I feel it in very specific ways. I feel the brain fog. I feel more bloated and I can just tell I need to go back to eating the way I was. And it's so easy for me to just fall right back into it. So when people ask how I lost weight, it was all eating. I still have not resumed my workouts the way I want to. That's part of the reason why I hesitated to put this video out. I said in the beginning, I haven't reached my goals. And a lot of that has to do with toning up, leaning out, out a little bit more. I'm working full time building a house. I just haven't gotten back into the swing of things. In the past, I feel like working out was such a big part of this equation for me. Whereas now it's more about the quality of foods that I'm putting into my body and being more mindful with what I eat, how it's making me feel. In the beginning, I spoke about mindset. And I think that that is another reason why I've been able to have success now, whereas in the past, I would just try and fail and try and fail. I was focusing a lot on external factors. I was focusing on how I couldn't fit in my clothes. I didn't like my body. I felt tired and lazy. I was coming from a place of lack. This time, I just went about it from the inside out. I want to feel better. I'm going to do what I need to do so that my body can feel its best. If I lose weight in the process, that's great, but I need to take care of my body. And I think so many of us, as we get older, see things that aren't the same as they were when we were younger. And we focus on that instead of focusing on making ourselves genuine just feel as good as we can possibly feel. It's not just about weight loss. And I think that's where I got stuck in the past. As I said, it may work for you. It may not. This is just what worked for me. Wow. This was a really talkative video. I hope I made sense. I feel like I was going in circles sometimes, but this is such a different video and it's so much to cover. And yet I feel like it's simplistic in a way. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments. I'll answer as best as I can. I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. If you did, I would really love it if you could give this video a thumbs up because it will help the video be seen by more people and hopefully help someone else too. If you enjoy everyday beauty made easy, that's what I'm all about here on my channel. Subscribe if you're not already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.